Hello everyone, welcome to today's Vision 6 Power Session, email deliverability, deliverability, sorry, and how to set up for success. My name is Andy, I'm a product trainer here in Brisbane. I'll be taking you through today's Power Session. So what does deliverability actually mean? Well, put simply, it means did the email that we've sent make it into the recipient's inbox? Now, as you'll see shortly, there's a lot of sort of things that go on when it comes to emails being delivered, coming from one server, crossing the internet, and then going into the recipient server where their mailbox resides. But essentially, at the end of the day, if we distill that down, it means does the email we're sending go to the right place uh, in in the on the internet and in the World Wide Web? Now, of course, if the user who we're sending emails to has some sort of filtering software or, or junk software, or maybe they've got a rule set up where emails are going into a specific folder or any emails from you are being put to the uh, the recycle bin or something like that, then of course we can't guarantee that uh, it's actually going to go into their inbox as this little example here is showing. We have delivered the mail, but something inside that inbox is moving it or scanning it or spamming it or whatever the case might be. So um, just a little uh, example there. But when it comes to what actually happens when you are sending an email. Essentially, you build the email message, which can be done in Vision 6 or your email program. If it's just sort of an, uh, an email to your colleague or something, you might be using Outlook or something like that. It then leaves the source server. So you press send, off it goes, goes via the internet, internet to the relevant destination servers all over the world. And then once it hits the right places, so if you're sending it to abcclient.com or xyzdonuts.com, it goes to those relevant servers. And then on those servers, we've got a few layers we need to get through. So there's security software, anti-spam software. Then we'll make it into the recipient's inbox or mailbox, I should say, in which case it could then go into the inbox or the spam or junk folder, depending on a certain number of things or a very large number of factors, which will dictate whether or not it goes into the inbox or the uh, spam folder. And we'll go through some of those things in a moment as well as to what those different things are and what areas can we control and tweak to adjust it so that your email can land in the inbox of the right person as well and, uh, and make it there. So when it comes to measuring success, there's a few different measures that you have available to you uh, in Vision 6 just for knowing where the message is and, and what sort of interactions have occurred. So delivered means that the recipient server has said, yes, I've got this message. Uh, opened is another thing we can report on. This is tracked whether or not the user has clicked on at least one link within the email or at least one image within the email has been downloaded. So basically when someone goes and opens an email, generally within that email will be some pictures. We actually add a very small hidden uh, picture into every email that's in Vision 6 as well as a tracking uh, source. So whenever the person views that message, um, it will then trigger that the person has opened the email as well. And then the last stage there is clicked. If the user clicks on a link within the email, that's something we can report on as well. And like all funnels, uh, they're obviously shaped a certain way. There's marketing funnels when we're converting leads to prospects to customers and that kind of thing. Similarly, when we're measuring success from an email point of view, generally the numbers will get lower as we go down. So uh, normally the deliverability rate is generally around 100%, which is a good place to be. You might get a couple of bounces due to incorrect email addresses or mailboxes being full, but generally deliverability will always be quite high. Then you've got the open rate, which at the moment uh, the industry benchmark is 44%. And then you've got the click-through rate. And again, at the moment, the industry average is 7%. And with Vision 6 here, we've actually got a great email marketing metrics report available on our website. That's linked in small print at the bottom of the slide there. But um, essentially, you can find it on our website under resources and then metrics. But this is a great little report. And as you can see here, it's displaying all of the information regarding you know, what the current open rates are as an industry average, the date uh, of the highest click-through and what the current click-through rate is as an average and that kind of thing. So some great data on this page, worthwhile bookmarking and having a look every month to see how your industry compares to the, um, uh, the, you know, the overall open rates uh, in general. So yeah, that's how you can measure success uh, from your campaign. So there is some data based on deliverability as well, just, just to sort of see how many inboxes are you reaching and then what's the engagement from that point forward. Now bring up this next, what I call jellyfish diagram here. You can probably see why. And it shows you some of the technical aspects when it comes to deliverability or sending an email. Different things that all have a bit of a weighting or a ranking factor 
into whether or not that email is going to make it through to the other end on that person's computer and in their inbox, not their junk folder. So there's four key areas here. There's the actual email itself. So the stuff within the message you create. You've got the list, which is the people you're sending to. You've got the domain, which is the people you are sending, or sorry, the domain you are sending from. So if you're a donut shop called XYZ Donuts, your domain might be xyzdonuts.com.au or something. But also similarly, it can revolve around the recipient's domain as well. So where is the email being sent to? And is that domain trustworthy? And then finally, the sending server. So the machine that's physically sending out the email. Uh, these are sort of the four main elements that uh, um, have to do when we send an email. And if we just quickly look, break these down a little bit so that the next little sections become a bit clearer as to what these aspect, aspects are and how we can tweak them and improve them from an email point of view. You've got the design and content of your email. So images versus text. By that, I mean, how many images are in our email? Is it very image heavy? Are the images very large and going to slow downloading? Is the email accessible? So can those with a vision impairment still use our email and interact with it and click on things? Is the email itself unique? So have you used personalization and dynamic content to make the email unique to your recipients? What's the wording and the content of your email like? So if you're sending an email about um, uh, you know, 100% free, medical product, Bitcoin, the sort of other certain keywords that are used generally to flag spam filters. And again, the number of keywords and that kind of thing all play a part in a spam filter ranking the uh, validity of your email and whether or not it's spam. And of course, then delivering it to the inbox or not. So these are just some of the things to think about. Uh, the length of the subject um, is a four subject line better than an eight subject line or a 10 subject line? Heaps of information and stats about that online. Have a look. And uh, also the relevancy to content. So is the subject line relevant to the things inside the email or is it completely different? Again, all these things play a factor. Then when it comes to the list, what addresses are in the list? Is it a lot of group emails like info at admin at, or is it people, you know, the names of people, Andrew at, or, you know, Tanya at, that kind of thing. So what types of addresses are on the lists? Are the contacts opted in? If they're not, well, it's actually against the Vision 6 terms and conditions, so you have to be sending to uh, opted in contacts as, as with all email programs. So one thing definitely to check. So never use um, purchase lists or that kind of thing. Um, but also if you get a lot of complaints and bounces because the emails weren't opted in or they were just a purchase list and the emails aren't correct or valid anymore, bounces and complaints can also affect your what we call sender reputation. So a few more things to think about. And also the source of the list. If you were speaking to someone at a trade show five years ago, and yes, they may have given you your business card and said, yep, sure, put me on your newsletter. I want to enter your prize draw, whatever conditions you had around that. As long as they said yes, then that's okay to, to email them. But have a think about it. if someone gave you the business card at a trade show five years ago, they've probably completely forgotten about you. So why are you sending an email all of a sudden five years later when you found their card? So also have a think about the validity of the list, the source, where did they come from? Is the user expecting an email from you? These types of things. And of course, if someone isn't expecting an email from you, yes, they might have attended your trade show booth or a conference five years ago. They remember you then, but they don't remember you now. And suddenly you email them, they're probably going to click that mark as spam button in their email program. And that will affect your domain authority and domain reputation. And it can cause future emails to go into junk or spam or just be blocked completely from that company. So those sort of things all do play a part. When it comes to the domain, which is basically the bit after the at sign that you are sending from, so at something or other .com or .co.nz, whatever it might be, uh, it's also a good thing to have a look and see that is it configured properly. And Vision 6 will guide you through this. This is the section in Vision 6 that you may have heard where you can configure your domain within the platform, which is where you sort of set it up and say that, yep, Vision 6 is allowed to send on behalf of this particular domain name. And that will definitely help your email make it through. I've also seen a few people sending from free email addresses. So it can work, but again, um, it's generally best to have your own proper business or company email address. So rather than send from an email address at gmail.com, hotmail.com, um, you know, bigpond or extra.co.nz, those kind of things, 
it's always better to have a professional business name because that way you're promoting your business and not Gmail's free email service or Big Pond's free email service. So business email addresses will generally work better as well because they can be configured. Free email addresses can't be configured. So they are more likely, a little bit more likely to go into spam. Again, one of many weighting factors that a um, email server will use to work out whether or not the email should go into the inbox or not. When it comes to the sending server, this is something we control. So does the sending server have good authority? Is it trusted? Is it configured correctly? And again, this is something that all of our technical team look after on your behalf, so nothing you need to do there. But I guess just showing you the full picture of all the moving parts uh, that an email goes through and all those different elements and layers of trust the email goes through before it makes it to the other end. And of course, are the IP addresses or the special numbers that these servers have, are they... Um, uh, you know, are they associated with sending reliable email or are they associated with spamming? So this is why it's very important for us to not allow spammers onto our network because they can harm our reputation as well as yours. So that's one thing we do. We we you know we allow, we um, we disallow people signing up for accounts and then being able to send from them immediately. There are sort of checks and processes that certain accounts have to go through to ensure that our um, infrastructure remains under good authority as well and is trusted. So yeah, all these little things that we look after for you in this point of view, uh, but all these areas here that you can control and look after. And we'll have a look at some of these in a bit more detail as well. So when it comes to receiving an email, so you've sent an email to Bob Smith, one of your clients, uh, Bob Smith's email server will then look at all these different things to say that, okay, well, have I received an email from this person before? Um, is that is the, the computer that is sending that email trusted? You know, is, is it on blacklists? Has, has it been known to send spam in the past? Is the email address a fake one that's been uh, created simply for the fact to call out and trap spammers? They're called honeypot addresses. They're addresses that you shouldn't never send email to because they are actually looking for people who are sending spam. So things like, this is not a real, real email address at so-and-so.com.au. If you send something to that, it's going to go, hang on, how did you get this email? It's not a real one, but you're sending to it. Does that mean you purchased a list or where is this information coming from? So that can um, flag and trip up spam software as well. Can the email be scanned? This is an important one, and we'll go through this in a, in a sec as well. So sometimes I get emails like this particular example here, where it's a nice looking email, but the entire image, sorry, the entire email is one big picture. This makes it hard for email programs to be able to scan the contents of it because it's all pictures, it's not words. It also has... Um, issues with our vision impaired users where they can't or uh, well, their software can't read out any of the email either because there is no text in it it's all saved as an image so there are also um, you know reasons not to have one big picture or just multiple pictures uh, text as pictures in emails as well so a few things to think about there is the email content okay or does it mention keywords that are often related to spam like 100 percent free or 50% you know, off sale, if it's using a lot of these keywords all over the message, that can trigger spam uh, uh, checks as well. Is the domain configured? Are the links in the email legitimate? Or are they phishing links, like pretend links that go off to fake banks and things where you know people put in their details and suddenly your account's drained? So these are things that these servers will scan for as well. They'll test the links to make sure they're okay and they're safe. Um, have we had any previous complaints from this particular sender and this kind of thing? So lots of different pieces to the puzzle when it comes to uh, delivering emails and, and the different um, components related around that. So things that Vision 6 control is actually the configuration, all that sort of security infrastructure, the way the email looks, so the code, and also the reliability and security of the um, actual platform itself that you're using. But things that you can control, and these are the, the key ones to have a look at here, is the actual email subject and wording. So how long is the subject? Are there any typos in it? So always spell check your email and the subject. What is the tone? So is it very salesy? Or is it does the email subject relate to the content directly? So some good tie-ins there. The email design itself. So is it accessible? So have you added alt tags onto your images? Uh, the, again, the image to text ratio. If your email is just full of pictures like this one was, then not only can this not be scanned by email software because there's no text to read, it's all saved as a big picture. Uh, there's nothing in there for vision impaired users to be able to use your email either. 
And also it's going to be quite a large email in terms of its physical size. So it can be slow to load. Um, so there, there are issues with sending text uh, image only emails. So an important one to think about. Also the email content and the subject uniqueness. So imagine you're sending an email out to you know, 10,000 people, everyone on your database and off it goes. If all of those emails have the exact same subject line and exact same content, and let's say 80% of your audience happens to use Gmail, if your Gmail's AI email scanner and you suddenly get you know, 8,000 emails all from the same company, which all have the same subject and wording, you might go, oh, are they spamming? What's going on here? And they'll, their, their scanner will do a few more checks to, to work out whether that's true or not. So if you personalize your email and uh, through the subject and the wording, that can assist you in getting that email through um, scanners a bit sa more safely as well, because each version of the email is a little bit more unique. The subject line might contain the recipient's first name. So again, each version is going to be unique. Similarly to the content, you might have the content be a little bit more dynamic. So the introduction of your email might mention the person's first name. And as I'll show you in a few moments, you might also have parts of the email changing depending on different users or contacts on your list. So not everyone is getting the same version of your email and newsletter. That can help you too. And you've got the list members, of course. So just making sure that everyone on your list is valid. Did they opt in? Are they working in real email addresses? They're not honeypots. Um, have you had complaints and bounces on previous sends? So you can actually find this out when you view your reports in Vision 6. You can see whether or not anyone has complained about it. And of course, you can see bounces as well. Um, a complaint is basically when someone hits the marker spam button in Outlook or Gmail. Not, email, not all programs are supported with the complaints processing of getting that feedback back in Division 6. But uh, certainly with Outlook Online and uh, Gmail, if someone hits marker spam on your message, this will come up as a complaint. It's always important to get as few of those as possible, hopefully zero of them. Uh, but of course, uh, generally, if you're sending emails that people have asked for, they've opted in, it's stuff that's relevant to them, they probably shouldn't complain because it's all valid, but certainly something to check. Um, then you've, of course, got uh, your configuration of your domain. So within Vision 6, of course, just check that under the settings area, your domain is configured here. Mine is not, but uh, yeah, just check that's configured. That can assist you in delivering emails through correctly as well. So what are some things you can do today? And I'll quickly jump into Vision 6 to look at some of these as well. So only ever send to opted in contacts, never purchase or rent, rent lists. It, I don't know of anyone who wants to be on a mailing list to, to be able to have their email address sold to people so they, they can get more spam. I, that's not really a thing, but apparently people still think it's okay to purchase and rent lists. Just keep in mind that that's against our terms and conditions, as is that for many competitive packages as well. Um, use personalization if possible. Don't use spammy subject lines and make sure your emails follow best practices. And in case you're wondering, what is that? Uh, within our support center, we have a great article with many sections relating to different areas and some best practices we've popped in there for you. Uh, don't worry, we'll, we, we will send through this um, article and many others we've discussed today in our follow-up email with the recording as well. Uh, check your reports regularly as well. So that's something you can do, as I showed you before. Have a look and just see what people are clicking on, see what articles are of interest there. Use the click map, heat map there to see what people are engaging with. So definitely have a look at your reports and then remove any contacts that have unsubscribed or bounce. Um, and that can potentially save you a bit of money as well because you're taking them out of the system. A uh, good idea you can do there. And just keep in mind that even if you delete unsubscribed contacts, don't worry, Vision 6 will prevent you from sending to them again in future anyway. So we do prevent them from being re-imported a good little function there. So you can remove unsubscribed contacts from your main lists. We'll still remember them in the background. So I know we're sort of at the end of the session. Some of these sessions are longer than the 20 minutes and some are shorter. So a quick look at how to do some of these functions. So personalization, we'll jump into vision six now, and we're going to quickly look at the contact list. Now you'll see here that I have a field called dietary here in my list for my bakery. And in there, we've got whether they're vegetarian or gluten-free. So we've got some different statuses that our contacts can set. To make an email personalized, you can, of course, go into the email and do things such as add in the first name of your contacts, a dear first name, something like that. That's all done through this little wildcard drop down here. But one of the other things you can do is personalize based on any information that you have. 
So why don't we use that dietary field that I showed you there to our advantage? And for our gluten-free contacts, they can see a different version of the article to our non-gluten-free contacts. So this goes back to making the email a little bit more dynamic. It's reacting to data that you know about your contacts, and it's going to be a little bit more unique. So when you're sending this out to someone called Bob, who's gluten-free, the first name will say Bob. The article will be this one. If it's going out to Tiffany, who's not gluten-free, then the first name here and here will say Tiffany, and the article won't be the gluten-free version. So again, we're building one newsletter, but it's unique, it's dynamic, it's responding to our contact criteria. And if I'm a spam checker, and I've got hundreds of emails all coming from you into my system, they're all going to be a little bit more unique, and that can help pass spam filters as well. Again, I won't go into too much detail because I'm time limited in these sessions here, but that is a very great feature that we have called conditional content that lets you change information in your newsletter based on what you know about your contacts. So in other words, the data that you're storing here. Again, we'll include a link about how to do this in your emails when the recording is sent. Removing bounced and unsubscribed contacts, as I mentioned before, this is something it's quite easy to do. So all you need to do is pop over to your contact list. And you've got a few options in the search here. You can do a new search and you can look for things such as subscribed is no. Run that search. That will show you everyone who's unsubscribed. You can then highlight them down the side and in the actions, hit delete and remove your unsubscribed contacts. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, even if you remove them, Vision 6 will still remember them in the background, not send them and prevent you from importing them again in future. Uh, that's the default setting we have. If someone's email has bounced, so let's say the email address was wrong, no longer valid, it's bounced, we call that a deactivated contact. And you can search for those too. You can go activation status is inactive, search. That will show you everyone who has had an email bounced to them from your list. And again, you can tick the boxes of all the people and in the actions, hit delete and remove them from the system. There's probably no point of keeping bounced contacts on your list because you can't center them anyway. You know, why keep them? It's only if you're using SMS or something and their phone numbers might still be fine, then yeah, by all means, keep them in there. But uh, yeah, you can remove them if you don't need to uh, keep them. And finally, email preferences. So again, another thing you can set up, and I'll send an article around about this at the end, is the preferences function. So rather than bombard your contacts with all of the emails that you send, why don't you set up uh, the preferences over here in the account area? And this way, you can have your contacts opt in and out of certain types of emails. So rather than send all emails that you make to every single contact, why not use preferences so that when you send newsletters, you only send it to people that have asked for newsletters. Or if you're doing your cooking class um, ads for upcoming sessions, only send it to people that have asked for cooking class emails. So the list preferences is a great little thing you can set up. And the preferences themselves can be added into your sign up forms. And of course, we've got preferences forms as well, where the user at any time can adjust the types of emails they receive from you. So another great little feature to potentially lower your unsubscribe rate. People can just opt in and out of certain emails instead. So a good little thing to set up. Well, thanks very much for your time today. My name's Andy. I hope you enjoyed this session. We'll see you next time. Thanks again.